Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Mick05, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a TDM review or analysis on uh, the infamous 102 uh, Latromi, um, AK from Deliberate Murder, 102 Deliberate Murder. Um, I think they won the most recent uh, TDM competition. Well, we're not going to be looking at the um, clan games. Um, I have only could find the Russia versus Poland finals um, because Latromi's from Russia. Um, and I've chosen two maps. Uh, my two maps that I can stand anyway from the uh, demos provided. Uh, the first one's Purgatory. Uh, just a quick uh, overview of Purgatory before we get into the demo, I guess, um, or strategy behind the map is um, you want to focus a lot of your attention on red and a little bit on rail, and then obviously be well prepared for the battle suit or the quad, whichever one your team favours. Um, but it's a lot of the time is spent fighting in the red room and trying to reclaim the red room. Um, and if you have the rail gun, it just makes holding the red room a lot easier. Um, there's a lot of like there's a window above red and there's a, a launch pad above red as well. And also down the corridor, it just all those long sort of um, opportunities where the rail gun is more efficient than other guns. Uh, I mean LGs good also to hold the room but rail guns vital around other areas of the map especially around quad and uh, down where the rail gun is there's a lot of um, open spaces so hopefully I'm not sure exactly what position Latremi plays for Russia um, but from the comments that I've read already about this demo it looks like he's probably going to be the stacked red player which will be exciting to watch since um, those players have a lot of decisions to make um, in terms of where they go, where they look for kills compared to um, a supporting player who just holds a position or um, you know doesn't move around a lot necessarily. Um, so anyway, we'll get into the demo and we'll um, have a look where uh, Latremi or how he uh, plays Purgatory. Um, I'll be pausing the demo. I don't think I'll rewind a lot just because I don't want to screw anything up, but I'll pause the demo a lot to just talk about what he does. I have already watched the first minute of the demo, and I was just like, no, nah, I'll be able to do this on the go, because um, he's actually a really intelligent player from the first minute I've watched, and also I, I have watched the um, 102 versus, uh, I think it was Action, uh, Grand, uh, what are they called, HOQ Grand Finals? I can't remember what HOQ stands for, though. But um, yeah, all right, anyway, we'll get into the demo, and we'll stop talking in front of a black screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is pause at the um, very start on his spawn. And then we'll see where he goes. Alright, so Latromi got the railgun spawn uh, on this map. It's a really, really nice spawn. Um, there are no, there, there's one spawn um, down just in front of him um, if you can see my mouse, yeah, you can see my mouse. So just through this wall, there's one spawn there, and there's one spawn also up to the top right above him. But apart from that, you can almost grab the rail, and which is what he does in a second, and run off without taking um, too much unnecessary damage, and you can get yourself in a position where the rail gun becomes really, uh, you know, useful. Um, so let's see where he moves. <laughs> Okay, I just realized I had um, the wall hack still thing on, so I'll turn that off quickly. Alright, and I'll just stop here as well. So the reason that he's just ran straight to mega health is because it's, you know, apart from red armor, the other major item in the game. Um, Railgun, as you can see from where he's standing, it's a very far away distance from the two players in front of him. It's going to be really useful. And the other thing is, there is a spawn down here. But the player who spawns down here chooses to go for the Mega or go for the Plasma Gun first. Nine times out of ten or eight times out of ten, they're going to go for the Mega first. Which means Latroma's just taken the, taken the uh, Plasma Gun, the only gun that's down here. And he's about to deal damage on the guy who's, you know, fighting over the Mega. So straight away, you know, he's taken away uh, a secondary gun and he's also got the first time on the Mega, even though you can you can guess when the Mega is going to come up around 40 again. But um, there are shards around him, so, you know, eventually he's going to get to that. 
like armor, any armor helps. Shards definitely help. You always want to go for shards if they're available. Um, but dealing that damage and getting that position was more important. So let's see where he plays with this. Okay, here's another place where the railgun is really effective. Underneath red. Um, and like I was saying before, above red as well. So not necessarily in the red room. Uh, I mean, the railgun can still be effective hitting window shots and hitting um, down to that long corridor uh, where rail comes from. But, um, I mean, yeah, you will get into that when, when you've got a good position in the red room and you've got a stack. You can afford to miss a rail shot. That's when you want to stand there. Um, until then, if uh, your enemy has the red room, you want to constantly be looking for those um, high ground shots because all they're going to have is a lightning gun uh, at best and it's not going to do anything to a rail gun if you're sidestepping into a shot, sidestepping out of a shot. Um, Alright, let's see where he goes anyway. So right here, his team are deciding, you know, it's time to take red. We've all got our guns. We've all had our spawns. Let's push the red room. Um, obviously, if they're not in red, that means their enemy's definitely in red. Because like I was saying at the start of this demo, red is the most important room. And let's see how he plays it. Alright, so as we saw from his rallying, he was moving between the window and the launch pad. They're both really nice spots. Um, essentially, no one from inside the red room, if they're enemy, can come up, uh, they won't come up the launch pad because it's a free rail. Um, the reason Latrome has dropped down to Mega here is because he knew Mega Health would be up about 40, since it always is, and he also saw it got taken. Um, unfortunately here, I think he maybe dropped down a little bit too early. Well, I mean, he definitely dropped down too early since the Mega Health's about to spawn now. But it um, doesn't matter. Like, for him, I mean, ultimately, he would have liked to take the Mega, but it doesn't matter. He's still got time for a fresh spawn. We're past the 30 seconds, so Quad could be up at any time. He's obviously going to look to move to a Quad or Battle Suit when he respawns. So why is he waiting? Why is he not taking the Quad? There's nobody else in the room except for him. So he can leave the quad up for as long as he wants. Pavel's got a lightning gun and I'm guessing a little bit of armor. So he's the ideal person for the quad. Even if Latromi had the best aim in the world, it doesn't matter. You should still always give the quad to the most stacked player. Even if they don't have guns because you, because you can drop them guns. So because... Alright, let's just talk about the time for a second. So the time's really important. 45 seconds on the clock. So let's say the first red got taken at 5. That means the second red's going to be up at 30. Let's say the second red got taken dead on 30. That means the next red's going to be 55. So this quad, and actually it's really nice for Battle Suit and Quad to push into the red room right now because the next red's going to be up. And you want to get that early advantage on um, power-ups and establish yourself in the red room. So um, I already know what's going to happen here, but Latrome is going to move to the red room to secure it for his team, and Pavel won't be far behind him. Another important thing he just did that I realized was he jumped past the shards. That's because you want to give every little tiny bit of armor or 5 plus 5 HP bubble to the quad. That's how it works. That's how everyone should, um, that's how everyone should sort of uh, uh, play their game, I guess. Is If an armor is up, you tell the quad or the battle suit on your team, say, come get it, it's up. I'll hold it for as long as I can. Ultimately, if someone looks like they're going to drop on it, they, they know that you're leaving it up, they're going to try and drop on it, you have to run over it. There's no other choice, or you're going to lose the red, and that's worse than not taking the red at all. Um, okay. Okay, so another important thing on the timer. Again, this is really easy... For newer players, well, I guess not newer players, but newer and mid mid tier players to get their head around, right? Mega health is for uh, 35 seconds, so it, the first one's going to be up around 40. I mean, you should know this from Jewel anyway. 
sorry, the, the first um, respawn of the Mega Health is going to be at 40. The second respawn is going to be at 115, 120. Okay? Lightning guns, any gun, any gun in the game. First respawn, around 30. Second respawn, around the minute. And then, you know, it starts getting a little bit slower after that because people don't take them directly on time. But that's what he's going to do now. So it doesn't matter that he didn't take the red armor. He's holding the room because it's got the lightning gun in it and it's the most important room to hold. I think that was probably a little bit of miscommunication. I mean, Latromi would have ideally liked to take that red, um, but he got stuck going through those pillars. Uh, only two, uh, I mean, if I point my cursor, sorry, one and two can be gone through, as you just saw Latromi having a lot of trouble getting through that one on the, the angle. Um, and I don't know if this is an older demo, but I thought that got changed, but it doesn't matter anyway. So Mick, why did Latromi leave that shotgun up? As I spoke about in another demo, um, I, the grief demo I believe it was, when he dropped the plasma out in the open in front of a railgun. <laughs> Give up the shotgun, okay? At the moment he's got 6 shotgun shells, he's got lightning gun 31 with the next one spawning in about 10 seconds, but he's got lightning gun ammo around the corner. He's got red armor that's going to come about up. He's going to defend himself with grenades, so he's not going to take that rail shot. He's going to stay alive and take a red armor, you know, against taking a shotgun that um, he doesn't need. But, I mean, obviously the teammate, the enemy is going to get it. But, you know, a shotgun and his life versus a red armor and an LG gun. So, you know, weigh up, weigh up your options, guys. And actually, there's an intelligent thing, you know, he he went back for the gun. So that was, you know, that's even better than expected. Alright, so his positioning there was really, really important. So he come back to red like he's probably going to do all game. But... He saw there was a guy with rockets standing just on that, that little, uh, those couple of steps that are just near those pillars that he tried to get through before. Why has he come around the corner to fight a guy with a machine gun? Well, you know, I've just explained it there, uh, just talking about the situation that he's now in. So he's put himself in a better position to pick up a frag. His teammates just died, Pavel just died in the red room. So he's more than likely, you know, going to be pressed to just run into the red room without taking a lot of damage from that guy with the rockets. So, let's see how he plays this one, but he should kill this guy, and maybe just, like, slow push into red. And that was just, that's great dodging, and great, you know, he didn't just run straight in a, in a straight line at the red, you know, that's just, that's high quality dodging. So he's spamming rockets there because there's a spawn there. There's also a spawn to his right as well. So he's just expecting because, I mean, he was low health. So he could have been machine gunned down had his rockets not been superb. And, you know, 33 hit points and a little bit of armor or 30 armor as well. Could have been machine gunned down from a fresh spawner. So he just wants to alleviate that damage by um, getting that initial shot on. Had he hit a spawner, he would have switched the shotgun, stepped forward into the shot and taken the kill. So he's moved out of the red room because um, someone's just picked up the red and the LG in front of him. 
Um, well, not necessarily the red, but they're going to get the red. Uh, he doesn't really have the right... You know, he's got one rocket ammo, three shotguns. He'll more than likely die to uh, someone of... You know, I know the Poland team have, you know, Avic and, and very high-tier players. Someone with really strong LG would just absolutely shred him running into that red room. So rather than giving up a life, he's decided to come and play the back area. Um, battle suit's up very, very shortly, so he's going to get in a position for that one. I don't know if he's necessarily going to take it, but that's the position. That's his mindset right now is give up the red, get a better position on the, on the suit. Okay, so those guys at red more than likely won't get around to the power-up in time. Um, I can't remember exactly what time it was, but that's Latrome's thinking right there, moving out of that room. It's as soon as he saw, like he would have, if they were, if they were still on machine guns and they hadn't got that LG, he would have killed them both, taken the LG, and maybe waited for red. Um, had his team already been in a position for the power ups, but because uh, the fresh spawner machine gunner got the LG. It's a, it's a no-go zone. He, he turned around and decided that definitely power-up, getting out ready for power-ups was the better option. Now, the first thing he's going to do, and I, and, I, and I know he's going to do it because I can see he's already looking at it, is he's going to collect that rocket ammo. Okay, so that's another important thing is that, guys, you've got to look for ammo for your guns. Um, I've seen a, a lot of uh, Australian players especially the lightning gun. They run out of ammo and they don't know where the ammo shells are. So just make sure that you're fully aware of where all the ammo is on the map. And if not, explore the map in spectator view. It's not that hard. It takes five minutes to learn where all the ammo packs are. Okay, so what we call that is a cycle. So he dropped down to Mega. He's gone through the uh, gone through the Mega teleporter. He's not going to go to that um, the other yellow armor. He's going to come back to red. That's that's his cycle. Okay, and that's a really nice power up run. You know, his aim was a little bit off, but it didn't matter. He had the health to spend on missing shots, and you know, obviously he didn't want to hit his teammate, so he was trying to be careful about the way that he was shooting as well. Um, he was in red room waiting for a red armor. But both power-ups were there. So his team got both power-ups. And what are two power-ups waiting for red? They're not. So he moved out of the room straight away. He, he thought he'd check out Mega. He didn't know the exact time on it. He probably would have known roughly when it was up. Um, but he didn't know the exact time on it, I believe. Um, actually, just going back now. To, he took it around 2.10. He might have known the time on it, actually. So... He, I mean, he dropped on it. He saw Avic down there anyway. He dropped on it. It was a really nice first rocket. He killed Avic and then, you know, picked up the Mega battle suit. Quite a great one. And you can see already their team's pulled away 35 to 8. And you can just tell by the way the Trummy's playing. Like, he hasn't died in, like, the first, you know, two minutes. Uh, uh, you know, he died really early on after he uh, got the railgun. But since then, he hasn't died. So you can just see, like, one player makes such a difference on a team. Okay, so the reason he didn't go back to red before was because um, the other team already had position in red. And he was trying to slow play it. Like, his team were trying to push back into red, but they didn't want to give away a lot of frags. Um, like, if someone has a lightning gun, that could be two or three frags pretty easily, like you saw Latrami get at the start of the video. Um, so, see where he goes off the spawn. Yeah, definitely the wrong decision. And he's going to know that now. But yeah, I think he was maybe looking to steal the 50 health bubble after he first took an, took initial damage. But it was definitely that was 
clearly the wrong decision. And, you know, that's a mistake, but these things happen. Okay, FYI, I don't know that he had a time on that, so I reckon that was a little bit of dumb luck. Um, but he charged headfirst into the red room again, knowing his team wasn't in there. I probably disagree with that decision, but, I mean, he did get the red. I mean, he still died, of course, but he got the red. He denied the red. Um, it's not a good thing to do all the time, but let's call it a win in this case. But I, th I felt like that was probably a little bit lucky, unless he was communicated the time on red. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, I don't even know what that guy was doing, that noob Akai guy, he just grenaded himself. That seemed like very low tier play, but okay. Latremi just got the LG, uh, noob Kai killed himself to, so he didn't get the red. Um, it's going to be Latremi's next red, but with the battle suit, you can see they've taken the red room. I'm not sure where the quad, oh, the quad was theirs as well, actually, so again, they were playing double power up. So they've taken Red Room back because of it. And just poor play from Poland.
allowed to stuff it up too much. So we couldn't put extra butter in the dough. So we just bought half that and put it in the dough. Um, but we're trying to get the fried and that was right. And then the two bars are just in the dough because we couldn't have those sitting in the other bar. So they were just right there for that bar. Um, just always look for the fire to be down the middle. Um, especially when you have pie and stuff like that, you're always looking at the dough. You always see the bar to be down the middle. So it's a good thing to have that dough. So we want to um, alleviate that um, that middle part. So we use half of the bar in the uh, bottom of the box for our uh, fire and rice. Stuff like that. Stuff on the bottom. Excellent. That was a bit unlucky. So another important thing that you saw there was his team had time on rail. Uh, that's really important for players to communicate, especially in clan games, railgun, uh, especially on this map. And actually, well, I'm going to say every map, um, railgun can be so crucial to winning a game. If uh, your team has control of it, you'll just you'll you'll see the frags just start appearing on the board. Another thing that he does with the railgun, and did it at the start of the game as well, and I also talked about this in my last TDM video, was he uses all his rail slugs. That's what you need to do with the railgun. If you get the railgun, you need to just... Even if you think you're going to miss a shot, just take the shot. Because 10 slugs can go so... You know, that's... You know, if you hit 5 of them, that's, that's you know, 5 times 80, 400 damage, so... I think he was a little bit unsure about where to go then, or where the enemy were, or how to get into the red room maybe. 
But he's finally made a way in. He's back to a way in. He does go down, but he took out two guys with guns. Although they did just respawn with guns anyway. Probably would have picked up that railgun ammo, even if he uh, immediately didn't need it. Back at the uh, rocket rocket area. Yeah, it's a bit ballsy against Avic. Well, wow, Avic's LG was really bad there, actually. Okay, in that kind of position, it's okay to stay with the grenade launcher because um, you're 100% sure that, or you're not 100% sure, but you're fairly sure that the opponent in that case maybe had a stack. Um, so that that time, it's okay to stay with the grenades, whereas before when his opponent had only a machine gun, should have switched the machine gun as well. That's really nice um, setup there from Jeenan. Really nice battlesuit setup. Uh, good position to stand in anyway. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good steal. Good steal. That's that's really nice play by Latromi there. Five minute warning. That was actually a really smart play from Gene on there to get that gauntlet in. Looks like there was a little bit of miscommunication there between Latromi and Pavel, but I mean, um, Cam and Freys do that all the time, where like it seems like Pavel's playing more of a Freys role and, and Latromi's playing a little bit more of a Cam role. Um, not exactly the same on this map since um we set up a little bit differently to these guys but um uh like the fact that they just sort of were a bit conflicted there over who's taking the yellow armor that just seemed like a real came in fra uh, came in phrase move And that's why the grenade launcher is above the red. I don't know why Latremi wouldn't keep that railgun, but whatever. Pavel should definitely have dropped rockets there. Definitely have dropped rockets there.
Little bit unlucky. And now he's just getting spawn frag, basically. It wouldn't be too worried about saving uh, lives at the moment, since their team's up by so much, you probably wouldn't care. He's probably playing a little bit more casual right now, like a little bit more relaxed. You might even see him just jump into the red room in a second. Jump in the frags, yep. <laughs> Rail by Pavel. Nice rock up, but unfortunately you ate a grenade. And we're summing up the last minute. I mean, there's not a lot of decisions you make in the last minute since that, um, the last couple of minutes. Since that, um, oh, that's nice. Dodging here is going to be good. He's got to be... Nah, that's all right. That's okay. At least he gave it an effort. Um, but yeah, in the last couple of minutes, like when you're up by heaps, you sort of just don't worry so much about the decisions that you make. You just play a little bit more aggressive. Just do a little bit more like what, like sort of what you want to do. Just if you see an opponent, you sort of charge at him. Hope to hit something special, etc. So again with the cycles coming back to red. Although he didn't live for long. And that should hopefully be it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to be like so negative when I was saying that I, I, I disagreed with some of the things that he did. Um, hopefully you can see both our sides, so why he did it and why I think that he shouldn't have done it. Um, but apart from that, you know, especially early game, a lot of the decisions that he made for the first like seven minutes were pretty flawless. Um, he played a really strong game. I think Pavel was maybe getting a bit jealous on the scoreboard and then maybe asked for a few more red armors because it seemed like that Latromi almost switched roles. I mean, don't get me wrong, Poland were playing really aggressive on the red room. Um, so, But I, I, I think Rush has kind of like said, all right, you guys have it, we'll uh, lock you in there basically. But um, yeah, it seemed like Latromi's game definitely changed around the seven, eight minute mark. Um, and then he sort of didn't play so heavy on the red armor and, and cycling the red armor, I guess. Um, but overall, you know, strong performance. I'm, I can't see the scoreboard exactly as you can see, but uh, I assume that he, he top scored for his team and more than likely did the most damage. But um, yeah, all right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that anyway. I might make another one. I don't know if I'm going to do Hidden Fortress. I mean, um, Dreadful Place today. We'll see what the feedback is on this video, I guess, and then move from there. Um, I, I don't know. I felt like, well, as you can tell from the scoreline, it shouldn't be that much. Um, between, you know, the two best countries in Europe, allegedly. If th this was a grand final, that's why I say that. Um, the scoreline should not be that bad, and there's no excuse for the scoreline being that bad, um, except for that if you weren't playing with your core four roster, which would then, you know, say that the players, especially Nubakai, felt like he made a lot of um, bad decisions, uh, a lot of low... A lot of, uh, low to mid tier decisions um try to go for a lot of gauntlet frags you know that sort of stuff um i think you know the whole video you only saw the trami pull out the pummel three times um and that's about right like two or three times you can go for a pummel frag but it felt like Nubakai was maybe going for a bit too much but anyway um well played by Latromi. um hope he doesn't hate me now for the video but um yeah all right we'll see you guys later thanks for tuning in